Now that you know all about Sam's vision, let's unveil the Sam model. Sam has a very symmetric structure. We have a set of business functions. Under each business function, there are practices. Under each practice, there are two streams and there are activities at each maturity level under each stream. The structure really hasn't changed from 1.0 open SAM version until now. If you are confused or if this seems a bit too complicated to comprehend, don't worry. It's going to come back at uh, all the lessons that are coming in the second part of the course. So you will eventually grasp it what it is. Now, here is a more detailed view of the practices and the streams. Again, don't look at the details. Don't worry about the details. At the highest level, what you should remember, Sam defines five business functions. Each business function is a category of activities that any organization involved with software development must fulfill to some degree. Each business function has three security practices. These are areas of security related activities that build assurance for the related business function. Security practices have activities grouped in logical flows and divided into two streams. Now, streams cover different aspects of a practice and have their own objectives, aligning and linking the activities in the practice over different maturity levels. For each security practice, SAM defines three maturity levels. Each level has a successively more sophisticated objective with specific activities and a more strict success metrics. I've already mentioned that SAM has been around for quite some time. Throughout this time, the model has evolved and the core team has refined and polished the model, making it in fact easier to use. Now, this slide provides you an, how for the SAM model has changed from version 1.5 to version 2, just to provide you an idea of what sort of changes are we adding to the model. Although I would think that upgrades to the version 2 are going to be very iterative. I wouldn't expect things like new business functions or new security practices. So between 1.5 and 2, a new business function was added with three uh, security practices. Actually, this information was there already. So it's not like something completely new coming in the picture, but it was spread around in other business functions. And we've decided to pull it out and to create a new business function. We've added prescriptive guidance related to secure build and secure deploy and it was not there in the previous version. We have aligned the maturity level activities and we've linked them in streams. Each stream has a clearly defined objective. We've also made sure that in most streams, maturity level activities are designed in order of increasing difficulty and implementation cost. Now, one of the, thing that, one of the things we've noticed around SAM 1.5 is that there was not an intentional progression in the activities. It was possible to orphan an activity and never do it while still doing the higher activities. In the version two, we went deliberate around this to make sure, with a couple of exceptions though, that it is nearly impossible to get full marks for level three and not to do anything uh, on the lower levels. Again, there are a couple of exceptions to that and you will see some of them in the next chapters. Now, most importantly, however, we've spent a lot of time on debating how to do measurements. Uh, in 1.5, when you are answering the questions, uh, you could really say how widespread is the practice. Nothing about how well the practice is done. So in the second version, in version 2.0, what we've added is quality criteria. Essentially, a definition of done for whether or not something is counted. We will spend more time on this in the next chapters. So back to the model version two. As I've mentioned before, there are five business functions that should resonate with any stakeholder involved in the software development lifecycle. In naming the business functions, there was quite some discussion and the intent is for them to be generically named. 
whenever a stakeholder looks at them, he or she should immediately have a reasonably good sense of what's going to happen in governance, for instance, what's going to happen in design and so on. We will look in depth into each of these categories, but here's a quick recap of what each business function represents. So governance focuses on the processes and activities related to how an organization manages overall software development activities. Design concerns the processes and activities related to how an organization defines goals and creates software within development projects. In general, design will include requirements gathering, high-level architecture specification and detailed design. Nothing surprising. Implementation is focused on processes and activities related to how an organization builds and deploys software components Verification focuses on processes and activities that relate how an organization checks and tests artifacts produced throughout software development. Finally, the operations business function encompasses those activities necessary to ensure confidentiality, integrity and availability for an application that is in operations during its operational lifetime and all of the data that is associated with an application. Again, we'll come back to each of these business functions in part two and look at them in detail. Now, as I've noted, there are three practices under each business function and the idea is for each of those practices to cover key areas relevant to software security assurance. And each of these activities is a silo. And what we mean by the word silo is that the practices are decoupled enough that you can make improvements in one practice area without being required to make improvements elsewhere just to gain any benefit. Under each practice, within those activity streams, we have three successive objectives and they define how it can be improved over time. These objectives are typically ordered by increasing cost and difficulty that establishes a notion of a level at which an organization fulfills a given practice. So if you are not doing anything, you are at level zero. Level one is where we understand we should be doing it, we should be doing certain things, some of our teams are doing it and we have some ideas around it, but it's really very ad hoc and not well structured. Level two defines the practices. You've got a structured mechanism for implementing them, but you are not yet fully mastering the practice. At level three, we got good metrics in place good feedback, we are reviewing our processes and we're doing continuous improvements to the processes. So we are really masters at that practice. Here is once more the full view of the SAM model. Now, while it looks relatively big and getting an in-depth understanding of the full model might take some time and could be challenging. Firstly, we claim that this is the full picture when it comes to software assurance. Secondly, and as I've mentioned before, Sam's vision is not to go all in for each and every one of these topics. Whether you go hero in environment management or security requirements, it all depends on the notion of risk and your organization's risk appetite and risk tolerance. Let us zoom in on one of these topics from the verification business function, namely requirements-driven testing. By the way, jumping ahead of myself, in my opinion, this is one of the security practices with the highest return on investment when it comes to your software assurance program. This practice consists of two streams in which we have a set of logically linked security activities. The first one is control verification. It is really about test cases. So we've established security controls as system requirements and just like any other system requirement, they need to be tested. 
So for instance, you might have a requirement for password length of 12 characters with one upper, one lower, one digit, and one special character. Writing a test for this would belong to the control verification. So think of regular positive unit tests. The second stream is more focused on negative tests, how we could break something. I'm simplifying some things, by the way. We will go in much more detail when we are talking about this practice. But this is a good way to present this idea in simple terms. So, as I've already mentioned, we have three maturity levels for every security practice. And this practice is a security practice, so it's not an exception. For each maturity level in every security practice, Sam provides a high-level objective that describes what you should be doing per maturity level. For the requirements-driven security testing in level 1, you should have an opportunistic review of the vulnerabilities. In level 2, you would go and do a more thorough implementation review to discover risks against security requirements. Finally, level 3. Uh, in level 3, the goal is to maintain the application security level. Those are the uh, objectives per maturity level. For each practice, we also have two streams. And each stream represents a logically coherent topic within this security practice. Stream A, in this case, would be the happy flow of events. Think of positive tests. Stream B would be the attacker mindset. Think of negative tests. Now, each stream provides a security activity per maturity level that represents the most fine-grained security task. Let us have a look at the full picture when it comes to this security practice. So in stream A, at level one, it's basically the testers and developers that say, oh, we should check and make sure that the users are authenticated. We should make sure that there is proper authorization. And that is informal and ad hoc. So it can be very manual, manual uh, testing. At level two, you have some process in place. Uh, and the process says, here is how you take that mapping from an identified threat to an identified security requirements into an expected set of test cases. And at level three, which is the highest maturity level, that's where we have a very systematic approach that's where we get strong regression test suites that include a lot of security unit tests and functional tests. And all of that runs in your automated uh, regression suites. Uh, in stream B, and by the way, this is what typically people think of uh, security testing. This is where you use fuzzing tools. You got somebody who thinks like an attacker defining abuse cases, business logic flaws, and stress tests. These are the progression of the maturity levels. So typically, the first maturity level is relatively ad hoc and requires your organization to opportunistically find basic vulnerabilities and other security issues. Level two requires more systematicity, hence explicit security requirements, for instance, and test cases derived from those are a must have for control verification and for the second stream, you would create test cases that abuse the business logic. Level three is mastery. And for stream A, you would need to perform full regression test suite. Uh, by test, we mean, in this case, tests related to the security functionality of the system, by the way. Uh, in stream B, that would be denial of service and security stress testing. 